Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to have another young Indian with us today. Right now, we have with us Aishwarya Sarup. Let's listen to her. Over to you, Aishwarya. Okay. Uh, hi, Professor Subhu. Um, so, since we are free meeting, I will start from a little introduction of who I am, where I'm coming from, and then probably we can elaborate on my work. So, I come from a very small city uh, from UP, uh, Gorakhpur, and uh, my education has been there till, I mean, my schooling has was there. And then after that, I pursued uh, Bachelor of Technology uh, in Computer Science Engineering. Um, back then, the jobs were different kind. Uh, you know, a lot of US projects were coming in here and they required, you know, resources, ticketed resources. So probably most of the engineers in probably 2010 to 2015, 16, were going into ticketed resource uh, technology work, you know, consulting, tech consulting. So I did that for a bit. But then I realized that uh, my inclination in work was more towards something that is more impactful and meaningful. When you say impact, everything obviously has an impact. All the work that we do has an impact. But uh, what is the impact that satisfies you is what is important for, you know, personal growth. So... Back then, that was the idea. So I delved into uh, a more holistic approach towards uh, what I wanted to do. And then I suddenly moved to a startup where I was managing community. It was, um, I was managing the product. It was called Alma Connect. It was a social media platform for uh, that uh, brought together colleges on this one platform and helped them engage, you know. Um, post that, I thought, how can I earn more? Because there is only so much that you can do after you know moving from companies to companies. And um, like we were talking earlier, for women to be powerful, for, for women who are coming from certain families and when they are moving out, if they want to be independent, they need to have money and their own money, right? And that idea is something that I have been uh, I have it close to me. Right? Uh, if you're not making decisions for yourself, somebody else will make it for you. If you are an Indian woman, at least if you're an Indian woman, I would not say this. I would, I would not generalize it to the world. Um, so with that understanding, I thought, okay, how can we you know, get an education that helps me earn better and create more impact, right? That is when I, uh, sat, I uh, attempted CAN. I got a certain percentile. I had, I had some, some colleges uh, in my kitty. I got into Maika in the world, from where I pursued uh, a degree in marketing. Um, Maika, I would give a shout out to Maika because it is not a typical B school where you are taught how to make money or you know how money works in businesses and how it flows and how you can improve it or better it. It is more than that. It also teaches you um, how narratives work, how the society functions, what are the layers of society and how everything impacts everybody who is there in the society. So that is where I think uh, a lot of my sensibilities were touched and they were probably being improved to a certain level. Um, post that, I worked uh, with Sony Pictures uh, Networks India for two and a half years. Then I was with Swiggy and then I was with Paytm. In all of these roles, first I was marketing, then I was in a very data-driven role where I was, you know, looking at data, culling insights, uh, you know, pulling out behaviors of that group of people that we were targeting probably in Sony Pictures or in Swiggy or in Paytm, how they were behaving, what they were doing, what we wanted them to do as a company, you know, and uh, then taking the directions, the courses that we had to for those businesses. So this is a very, uh, you know, a small gist of how that was working, uh, how the work was. Um, having said that, with this professional journey, there was another journey that was going on for me. And that was, um, you know, how I can contribute to probably the society around me, if not at large, the people, the kids, the women around me. And I have been sensitive to um, female rights, 
I am humanitarian. I identify as a humanitarian, and I am very sensitive to female rights. Uh, this is why, while I was uh, while uh, I was working with the tech consulting companies, it was in forces back in 2015, 16. I was in, living in Chennai then. Uh, I started working with kids uh, in the rural areas of Kanchipuram. And uh, in these areas, we, there were these government colleges where students needed to learn, um, you know, English, maths, these two subjects basically, primarily, and because I did not know uh, Tamil, uh, is why I decided to teach them in English. And there was, I mean, apart from the uh, educational part that comes into picture, that is, there is a give and take that happens there. There was something that I noticed. Um, and, and most people wouldn't know these things. The people who live in, in those areas only would know about these sensibilities of, uh, uh, you know, and these nuances of regions and castes for that matter. I'm bringing up a very sensitive topic here. Uh, the, some of the kids were not having chappals in their foot yes. and the others were. And if you yes. notice the city, you would see that some of the people would ride bikes without shoes or chappals. And I asked somebody in that area that why this was happening. And they mentioned that it's because they know a certain caste which is not allowed to wear chappals. Right. And so was the case with the kids also. So we live in a, we live in a country where by birth we are having privileges and the lack of it. There is a pride in being born in a certain household, in a certain region, of a certain gender, you know. So... Um, I think that is where I understood that with everything that I do, I would want to be more principled, closer to the, the principles of humanitarian nature. And I would want to probably educate the society in whatever manners I can. Uh, which is why I, I mean, that was one stint uh, where I saw that this was happening, which is also why I kept doing this. Um, even after that, I was associated with uh, Make a Difference uh, when I was again teaching kids. And then now I am associated associated with the FEA where I have taken um, about two cohorts with actually three cohorts with Jharkhand, UP and uh, Haryana kids. And, you know, the, the, again, the same themes that we were talking about that the female child is always underprivileged. When you talk to a group of uh, a group of kids or teenagers, uh, males and females, the females have much lesser advantage than the males. Most of the times, their problems, the kind of questions that they ask, I don't have answers to because they ask questions like, "How do I convince my parents to not right. get me married and uh, to send me to probably learn uh, nursing or I want to be a teacher, I want to learn, I, I want to do BA." And so on and so forth. And they are more driven than the male kids, male teenagers, you know. So that is the reality of the nature. So um, through and through, these these have been there is a personal journey, and then there is there is uh, another journey of understanding what we are really missing out on. Because at, at least me and my colleagues, my peers, we are in a bubble. And this bubble that we are living in is not aware of what's happening in the on the uh, ground realities of the country, right? Even when we post on social media, we talk about things uh, probably on LinkedIn, we come from a lot of place of privilege and from an understanding of, you know, uh, uh, creating more work for ourselves. That let's post things, let's add more to the, you know, uh, to the this whole screen, this whole environment, this whole cloud that we have created. But with this information, we are also creating, a, you know, a gap. So with, I mean, because I'm a marketing student, I understand that India is divided into multiple sections, SEC, socioeconomic classes, or NCCS classes, or like we call it in TV or in e-commerce. Um, there is another e-commerce term where India is divided into three parts. India 1, India 2, India 3. Yeah. Right. And India 1 is probably you, me. We are India 1. We are the consumers who uh, consume for convenience. Right. India 2 is 
are the consumers who consume for better costs and then they probably go after the convenience. India 3 is unaware. India 3 is untouched because these are the people who are earning probably less than a thousand rupees a day. Right. So whenever we are putting efforts towards startup ideas, and now, I, I mean, lately I have been uh, delving more into what are the kind of businesses that can help move the system, better the society around us, you know. And like this this conversation is, an, is also a part of that initiative, probably for a di different section of people, the viewership will be different, but we again come to the point that what are we trying to impact? Are we try, trying to make money for ourselves or are we trying to create a change and an impact or are we solving for an, for an inconvenience, right? And in the past um, few years, the more that I've learned about what young people want, it is to solve for problems for India 1 and India 2. Uh, that's the most, that, where it goes, you know, because they have the most spending capacity. Um, having said that, if India 3, which is a very big population, which is probably bigger than India 2, if that is not educated well, or if it is, they have been handed cell phones. They have the network of Jio. You remember when Jio uh, gave free networks to everybody? Yes. There was a free cell phone with the SIM. Yes. Right? That also was happening in the rural areas of at least in UP, it was happening. I know Bihar also it was happening. I don't know across country how the acquisition was done. So that was one way to acquire the market. Right. Now they are used to watching videos. An influencer is earning more than an IIT engineer. Right. And that's not a degradation, but that's a comparison of impact. What the impact is. So in, the influencer who's earning more is able to reach more people. And the person who's sitting with a phone in a jhopri with probably a TV and a bike, but no food to eat. How are we enabling those people? The startups that we are seeing these days, they are to uh, cull more and more from uh, the people who can give, but they are not aiming at um, you know improvement or uh, another section of the society completely. So I think uh, that's where my educative and my principled motives are that at some point there should be an innovation there should be uh, you know uh, an expansion a discussion discussions are definitely there but there, there should be something that educates more people in india and i think uh, we need to talk to more people in india like i mean you also are an fa mentor and uh, you are connected with more of them uh, there are so many such organizations that are completely driven towards, you know, enabling these people. So I think, and uh, me saying this is also, you know, coming from a place of privilege. When I use the word these people, I shouldn't, I do. But yeah, I mean, that's a part of the journey that I have had so far. Um, yeah. Okay. It's a very powerful journey with many, many powerful ideas. And we just want to hear a bit more of your self. These are your ideas. But if, we, if you want to share a little bit of what you did in college and uh, how you enjoy life, you know, that's also part mm -hmm. of it. So we need a fuller picture. Okay. Okay, sure. Um, so I have, okay, I come from... from a certain kind of childhood and in that childhood i think i found resort in um i found joy in books so i love reading and uh, i think in standard eighth or ninth somewhere there actually in standard six i had a history exam and i had to study for that history exam and then my dad came home i was studying i had like three to four chapters and i had to do to get done with and I'm very bad at remembering things. Like if I have to remember dates, it's going to be so difficult for me. I'll keep looking at it and it's going to be so difficult. So I am more of a, um, the basics should be solid. The details I can forget. The basics should be solid for me. That's how it works for me. So my dad came home that day uh, from his work. My uh, dad usually comes home uh, at around 7.38. 
and there was a book in his brief briefcase that was the uh, or, that was the biography of mohammed ali jinnah yeah and it was in hindi so and hindi was not very easy to read because i was uh, studying in an english medium school and hindi i mean a whole book of hindi like for example i got this for my parents this one is uh, draupadi ki mahabharat palace of illusions by chitra banerji you know so it was this thick a book and i read it throughout the night i read that book i did not study for the history exam and i realized and i still remember the different details from that book that actually were are still so fascinating for me yeah i realized that for children for kids it is so important to have stories around you so i i have had piles of comic books around me throughout you know the prad comic books the diamond comic books and i was not exposed to batman and superman i was exposed to the desi uh, comic books so the whole family enjoyed reading we had good mohar books my parents would read it i would read it my brother would read it the whole family would enjoy reading so that was the environment that mostly i have grown up in um there is another very weird thing i don't know if it's good or bad but i come from a very politicized politicized region right? yeah and you can say that <laughs> yes, yes. we know the going uh, through very well <laughs> yes, yes so it has happened a lot of times that when when we sit on the dinner tables um my father would start talking i would start talking somebody else my mother or my brother would start talking and then we would end up in a fight yeah because our ideologies political ideologies are far apart they do yeah. not come together they are not either they are extremes um, or they are conflicting so we end up coming from the same family coming from the same principles from same ideals and we have ended up being um, people with polar different polar opposite ideologies you know so uh, that is how i mean my upbringing has been and i think i still enjoy it i still uh, feel very deeply connected to the political conversations that are happening and i do have opinions about them so that was the childhood <laughs> most of it um i struggled with chemistry i struggled with chemistry in 11th and 12th standard oh god professor that was very difficult for me i think i scored the least number least marks in chemistry in my 12th boards and uh, because i was coming from an icsc board and they teach you everything before uh, you know you it's not even needed for a 12th standard student uh, when i went to engineering college for the first three years i did not have to study you know and uh, i al- almost had already studied most of the things so my concepts i mean this is the this is the point of good schooling uh, and i'm very grateful that i had it uh, my concepts were clear and i still can there was a point 10 years back when i used to code like i knew three to four languages but at this point i still can code an entire you know module and probably make it work in some you know in some manner so that is how concepts work which is why i also understand that uh, whenever we are talking about anything at all our concepts should be the, the uh, blueprint should be clear so yeah most of my college uh, i i roamed around in delhi ncr that my college was in ncr so i roamed around i was exploring things i was for the first time out of my city without my parents yes. so that was pretty obvious yeah um and then i think for my first job the one thing that i i mean if anybody talks to me they would understand about me that hustle comes sort of naturally because uh, hustle has been a part of my life most of most uh, i mean at, at uh, many junctures so right after college the lehman brothers fiasco had happened in 2010 uh, 11 i think and uh, you suddenly were i mean there was barely any jobs and that was uh, a downfall of the market so i remember up i mean appearing for 20 interviews and uh, most of the times i was asked to leave before the interview would happen because they would already you know have somebody on board and uh, they would select their candidate so i remember 20 interviews and i i don't 
50 plus walk-ins that I went into to get my first job, land my first job. And that first job also was a difficult one. I used to work in US ships and then during the day I would again find jobs. So that was the first leg of things, you know, how uh, the ball got rolling. So there is, you know, uh, there is an understanding that I've already had since the start of my career that no matter what happens, you have to have the bone, the bone that hustles, you know, that knows how to hustle because the, even as we speak every day, there is an, a, a certain kind of change that is coming with the way that we are marketing, which, which is my profession, like profession, profession, which is uh, something that I uh, have to learn and understand every day. You know, no matter how much I see that I uh, want to build my career in growth and strategy, I have to understand marketing first because that's the uh, education that I have understood, I have gotten. So to really work on that, I need to understand how the society is working and how to, to really keep pace with the society and with everything young that is developing and getting developed by teenagers and early guys and, and uh, girls in their early 20s and people in their early 20s and for me to catch up in my early 30s it's it's something so uh, there are times when i download a new application and then i have this resistance that i feel that hey i have to learn this application how it works but then i realize that's my job right so every day uh, looking at how functioning of things are changing and that's my job and that idea of hustle sort of comes from there I derive it again and again from there so yeah yes the first job was a was a bit of a hustle but then uh, not that it stopped after that uh, after that like two years was smooth and then I had a back injury so I underwent an operation a surgery and then and I was on bed rest for eight months Wow. Which is when I joined, it was, yeah, I, mean, it was something. I was 23 or something. So, which is really when I started writing. Um, before that, I was writing, but I never thought that, okay, I will, I did not know when I will start it. That is when I realized that this is a method, this is a channel for me to, you know, uh, work on my own internal emotions and feelings. And which is when I started writing and I think um, when you find a community, having a community is very important. When you find a community that is sort of able to tell you that, hey, this is great. This is not great. Probably you can improve here. There is a problem, you know, a method of giving a feedback. When that happens to you is when you grow. And uh, that is the phase when I found the community as well. Right? So uh, since then, the understanding of community has been important. So these are, I mean, I'm just pulling these things from my experience and I mean, I'm just pushing it out there in the form of my takeaways from my own experiences. You know, what is important and why it became important. Even right now, uh, I think uh, my college community or my friends that I have made in the past 10 years who have stood the test of time, uh, being with them and being around them specifically when uh, you know things get, get difficult or even when things are great the celebration or the deliberation both happen with friends and the communities not with parents it's it's it rarely happens with parents it happens with peers mostly and most of our work most of our time is with the people that we work with or study with so yeah that that's that, that's been mostly it uh, yeah, so I'm a very boring person like that, but I'm uh, mostly uh, rather curious. I can, you know, spend time with myself. I keep reading. I keep looking for new things. I'm very curious like that. So I never get bored with myself. Yeah. <clears throat> but you read Jinnah, so tell me something that sticks in your mind about Jinnah, which you read back oh. then. Maybe something sticks and maybe you can share it with us because I'm quite interested in Jinnah. Not everybody is, but let's hear it. Yeah, so so Mr. Jinnah Muhammad Ali Jinnah married, um, fall in love. He fell in love with the daughter of his best friend. Yes. Um, Miss Ratti Bai Petit. Yes. So Miss Ratti Bai Petit was um, 
much younger. She was in her probably teens, and uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah was in in his forties. And this age difference was the problem. Plus, his friend he did not approve of this. But then, love is love. They pulled it off somehow. They got married, and then uh, the I think uh, the the industrialists, uh, the company called Bombay Dye, they the company the owners of the company are probably the descendants of Jinnah and uh, Rati Bai Patel. Yes, That's Vardia. Yeah, yeah, the Vardia. Vardia. yeah, Nets Vardia. Nets Vardia. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Jinnah's yeah, daughter so married. The... Jinnah's daughter married Vardia. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. Good. <laughs> this is because it was long back. Yet you know, I just wanted to know what had stuck in your mind that Jinnah actually. Yeah. Did. She was Parsi. He didn't marry a Muslim. She was Parsi. Uh, she was yeah. Parsi. So in that sense, it was not hardcore. Was not but hard then it, it's interesting to see that, uh, you know, when the society was separatist based on what religion do we really follow and what is the primary religion of a region and a separatist leader, uh, he decides to marry somebody who is not a Muslim. You know, right. he decides to marry out of love, right. which is essentially what uh, uh, what everybody you know goes after. That right? love beats everything. So I mean, it's sort of ironical to read about his own personal story there. Okay, all right. Anything else you want to add here? Um, pretty much. Uh, I mean, I think I've pretty much covered most of the things that I wanted to talk about uh, with respect to my work. Um, there are just a couple of things that I mean, whoever is listening to this, uh, I mean, whoever is watching this video, um, I think every time that uh, we fail, it, they, I mean, this is, this is just a takeaway from the things that I have failed at. <laughs> Honestly, and I, I, I still am in a phase where I'm figuring things out for myself. Every time that we fail, it's happening because we are going after something better, you know, in a better direction. And Anybody who is going, who is getting into the hustle of things or who's, who's really, who looks forward to do something, has the passion to really achieve something, they should be at it. They should find the confidence and whenever they fear it the most, they should do it. And mm -hmm. I think uh, we will be a great society if we, we decide to do that. Okay. All right. Good. Let's end it here, Ashwarya. Uh, I think you have said what you wanted to say, so let's end it here. I'll be back with another young person or an expert or a young expert soon. Ashwarya is actually an expert, though she refuses to be called one. So thank you, expert. And we will be back with somebody else soon. Bye till then. Bye, everybody.